Hello and welcome to the SEO Summit in Korea. We are having Aaron Ong, the CEO of iXSwap. Thanks for having me today. Thank you. Um, before we start, can you please give us a brief self-introduction to the viewers? Yeah, sure. Um, my name is Aaron Ong. Um, I'm the co-founder of iXSwap. Uh, my background has traditionally been in finance. Um, I was in private banking for about eight years um, as an investment advisor. Mm -hmm. um, then I moved into cryptocurrency in 2016. Um, started training very actively, then shortly after I realized that I should leave the bank. Aww. And then I joined Julian and I started this company, IXOP. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Then can you provide an overview of your company and its role in the SDO ecosystem? Yeah, so, so when we first started IXOP, um, it started off as a technology platform for, uh, we created an automatic market maker. Okay. And this was essentially trying to uh, remove the need for market makers in the security token industry. Mm -hmm. If you look at the, the history of the to security tokens, and if you look at exchanges across the world, even right now, um, the, the, the platforms don't really have any market makers on them. And a large reason for that is because the crypto market makers can't come over oh. because they don't have licenses to trade securities. And the securities guys don't want to come over because the market's still too small. Too right? small in too crypto, small. really? Uh, <laughs> I mean, the, the securities guys, because they're oh, dealing with billions of dollars, that's right? That's true, yeah. Yeah, so we, we decided to, to actually start IXSwap because mm. there was an actual need for secondary trading in the security token market. Okay. There were a lot of issuers in the market that were creating tokens, mm -hmm. uh, but it was issuing tokens to nowhere, right? So we decided to create that infrastructure to create some sort of secondary trading inside the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Okay, then as the tokenization ecosystem evolves, what role do you see for decentralized finance platforms and what challenge or opportunities does DeFi bring to the table? I think DeFi is the solution to a lot of the things that we're doing in the STO space right now, mm. um, especially in regards to financial inclusion. I think a lot of the stuff that in the traditional finance, the way that they do things, it's, it's meant for the affluent, it's meant for the wealthy. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't give access to a lot of assets across the world. So what we've, we started doing at iXSwap is that we started democratizing assets, okay. uh, like private equity, collectibles, private mm -hmm. debt, um, things that were never accessible by the normal retail client. Right? For example, we, we actually just launched a couple of projects in the platform and the minimum investment for each asset is a dollar. Right? Whereas in the private equity world, minimum would be at least a quarter million dollars or yeah. much more than that. Mm, true. And we would like to discuss more about STO industry as well. Um, what are the main trends and development you've observed in the global STO market and how do you see it evolving in the coming years? I think a lot of um, the world right now has started to pay more attention to STOs. I think in Recently the, or? Uh, I would say in the last one year, mm. one year or so. Okay. Prior, to, prior to, I guess, the last one year, there weren't many infrastructure players in the market. There were a lot of token issuers, yeah. um, but again, it was like token issuance to where, right? There were no custodians in Singapore maybe until about two or three years ago. Mm. And today, they're probably about seven to ten. And now the banks are all trying to get in, into this as well. I think the banks have started to notice that this is going to be the future of finance. Mm. Um, and now you're starting to see almost every single bank start to issue some sort of digital security. Yeah. And they're starting to create their own exchanges now mm. as well. True. Then how do you address liquidity concerns in secondary markets for security tokens and what strategies do you employ to promote tra trading and liquidity? Yeah, so I mean, that, that was actually the main reason why we started iXWAP. Yeah. Um, if you look at traditional markets in the STO space, it's all just OTC markets, right? Mm. There's no liquidity at all. Yeah. I mean, what we've created at iXWAP is, is a system where anyone with a security token mm. can replace the role of a market maker. And traditionally, market makers were the guys that provided liquidity in the open markets. Um, you would have to have both sides of the asset, the, the dollar, which is all the base currency, yeah. and the security token itself. Mm. What we've created at iXWAP is the ability for anyone with an STO and that base currency to come and provide liquidity mm. for other people to start trading as well. And I think that that's a, that's a killer sort of application for a lot of the, the token issuance platforms mm. out there in the market. Okay, cool. And what do you think the most, like, what do you think the advantage is for retail investors to invest in STO rather than like crypto or other? assets? Um, I think traditionally private assets, private asset returns have always been significantly higher. Yeah. Um, but it's always been for a close group of investors. Mm. Right? Um, I mean, for example, if you look at film financing or even the Korean entertainment, yeah. a lot of it was only for accredited investors, meaning mm. that in Singapore, that's, uh, you have to have a net worth of about $2 million. And retail users were never able to access those, those type of assets. Um, they were traditionally only allowed to access public, public securities, um, which 
I mean, they are interesting, yeah. but they're a lot more interesting assets in, in the private world, right? And mm. the, the private asset world dwarfs the public assets in the market right now. Mm, okay, then there might be someone out there who really wants to invest in SDO, but they might still be worrying about to invest in SDO. Then what steps do you take to educate or support your clients, including both issuers and investors? Um, we, we, over the last few years, because the STO space was still growing and yeah, is still growing, it is, yeah. um, we spent a lot of time actually teaching people and educating people mm. um, what are STOs and, and how it's actually different from cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people have this misconception that it's very similar, but they are we, similar, use, yeah. we use the same technology, but the assets itself is completely different. Mm. Right? And I think um, you know, a lot of the, the STO assets that we deal with are asset back compared to cryptocurrency, which is mainly magic money most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> then can you discuss the opportunities for cross-border invest, um, investments and international collaboration in the SO ecosystem, especially in the context of Korean markets? Yeah, so I, I understand that um, the Korean regulations are still getting built up. Yeah. And that's actually one of the large reasons why we're in Korea right now. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm particularly looking for Korean content, Korean okay. IP, to start distributing these assets overseas and helping the, I guess the, these Korean IP owners monetize their assets overseas as well. And I, I think having STOs breaks those borders um, and allows for these investments to go globally. Mm. Cool. Then what advice can you offer to the other companies looking to embark on a similar journey and enter this STO industry? Any um, advice? Yeah, I mean, one thing that I've noticed in the STO space is that a lot of people tend to go towards the private chains. Um, that's something that we, I mean, we, we, we know how to deal with them when we are looking for solutions or we're yeah. working with other people with, for solutions to mm -hmm. bridge the gap between the private chains and the public chains. Mm. Um, but I would tell everyone that it's not easy. Licenses take really long, really yeah. long to get. So actually what we've developed on um, one of our other sister platforms, Investor mm -hmm. X, is we created a SaaS platform oh, okay. where anyone that wants to create um, a platform for STOs mm -hmm. can come to us first. We can help them with the, with the technology on one side and we also lease our license out to them, mm. right? To help them. So all we need is IP? Yeah, pretty and much. And go to you? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> That's easy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, is there anything else that you want to add on before we finish? Uh, nothing in particular. Okay. Uh, but I mean, if, if you guys want to launch STOs, anyone's yeah. interested, anyone's mm. IP, please come and approach us and, mm. and chat with us. You know, cool. We're happy to explore any sort of collaboration with other groups out there in the market. Excellent. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you.